Okay, here we are in Pro Tools today, and we're going to look at an issue that plagues a lot of beginners in working with their home recordings, and that is the issue of mono or stereo tracks. Now, what happens is a lot of people don't really get the concept of how these two are different than each other and how these two work. Now, you might be watching this video because you're looking on the DawStudio.com and you're supplementing what you've read in the article on mono or stereo or you're finding this on YouTube. If you're finding it on YouTube, if you want to learn more information about it, click in the description below and there's going to be a link to the article. If not, just keep watching this so you can get a little bit more than what is being said, so you can see more of what's being said in the article. Okay, so basically the, the problem that happens is when somebody goes to record a vocal, like we see here, they want it to be stereo. They want it to come out both speakers. And so the, the natural inclination is to create a stereo track to record it onto. The problem is, is we only have one input with a microphone here. And so that microphone is going to only record it to one side, the left side of your stereo track. Maybe you can get it to record to both sides, but then you're really not doing anything different than a mono track. And that's what we're showing here. So if we play the vocal, Looking at Haiti. You'll notice that my master is showing an equal amount in left and right. And that's because my little panner here is basically taking this mono track and equally sending it both to the left and the right channels, or left and right speakers, or left and right headphones. Okay, and what's going to happen is it's going to create this image. Our brains are going to take and hear that it's even on both sides for both ears and say it's in the middle. So our brains tell us it's in the middle. Okay. But this signal can be sent to either side. Looking at There's my left side. Eyes. And there's the right. And you As can see the difference as I transfer over from left to right and back. Okay? And uh, there's another article on the site. If you click on the panner knob on the, the DawStudio.com, you get a nice article about panning and learn a little bit more about that. Okay, but basically, if you are able to record onto a stereo track with identical mono files, it's going to be exactly the same as a mono track here. Okay, and so what happens is maybe somebody figures that out, and so they record the mono track instead of stereo. Okay, they got that problem solved. But then the next problem they run into is they say, okay, I really want to fatten up this vocal. And so they say, okay, if I duplicate it, so I'm going to right click here and go to duplicate. And just say yes on everything. Okay, I've got a duplicate version of this. If I take the one, the second one and pan it to the right, and the first one pan it to the left, now I've got it's twice as much. It's going to be thicker, and you play it. Looking at it in the and you look over here, and you notice it's exactly the same. It might be a little bit louder because in panning, there's this little dip that happens in the center that helps us make a smooth transition from left to right. But it's actually this right here looking at it is no difference no different than this right here looking at it it's only a little bit louder because there's that dip in the panning and we can actually take that off and then it would be exactly the same okay so the key is is doing this is beneficial if we do something to one of these tracks okay we have to make some kind of change to one of these and the most common and easiest and simplest and best thing to do is to add some delay. Okay, so if we go to our delay, get our nice little mod delay that comes with Pro Tools, and we're going to do like a 50 millisecond delay, if we can dial that in, 50. Okay, and hit play. Looking at it in the eye. And now we have a stereo effect. Okay, so we've got the left side is the dry or unprocessed signal, and the right is delayed by 50 milliseconds. Okay, so as we drop lower, they're going to kind of get more and more to a one kind of thing instead of a, a real repeat, okay? Looking at it in the eyes As he comes crashing down on me uh, So if we go, let me see if I can move this to 20 Looking at it in okay, so now it's not mo as much like an echo, but it's really thickening it up. 
Okay, then we've got these other controls, the rate and depth, which is really kind of making this into a chorus plugin. And this is going to vary the pitch, so it helps us to make them even more separate. Looking at hate in the eyes as he comes crashing down on me. My body is cold, but hopes inside. Okay, so in addition to delay, we can do lots of other uh, time based effects. So we go to modulation, we can do um, a flanger. Looking at hate in the eyes as he comes crashing down on me. Okay get some really cool kind of sounding effects. The the thing that a lot of people m mistake with this is that changing the EQ or changing the, the compression isn't really going to get you that effect. Basically what those things are going to do is kind of just mess with the panning. It's going to kind of make it uneven and stuff. So for example, let's mess with the compression. Looking at hate in the eye. Looking at hate. Okay, so now it's like sort it to the right and then as the compressor on the right channel kicks in it shoves it to the left okay kind of just messes around with everything I'm gonna option click that over copy it over and now I'm gonna mess with the EQ so I bring the highs down on this one and bring the highs up and the lows down on this one and we listen Looking at hate in the eye. Okay, and we get kind of this kind of phasey effect, and that's because of the phase shift that's happening between the two different EQs. Okay, so not really the effect of really fattening it up. So really to fatten stuff up, you've got to go in there and add some time-based effects. So like I said before, the time-based effects are going to be your delays, your um, phasers, flangers, chorus, talk box even works. Okay, all of these crazy kind of effects are going to help you get a, a thicker vocal and make that mono signal a stereo signal in a legitimate way. Okay, so remember that when you're recording something that has one source, like one microphone, like a vocal, it goes to a mono track. If you have two microphones connected or two outputs of a keyboard or something like that, then you're going to you can record on a stereo track or you could record on two mono tracks. Okay? But in order to record something in stereo, it needs to be a stereo source. But just remember that as soon as you get it in here, everything goes out stereo. And be sure to check out more of our great videos and articles on the dawstudio.com.